on the Muskegon Channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly. Dave Cackley is over there, who is now known as the King of Empty Promises because what do you? No, well, I didn't make now, you a promise. Uh, you, well, I don't that, make promises I can't keep. I got found this really great Christmas gift. I'm gonna get you something this year, Andy. It's gonna I didn't be really say that. great. I said Oops, maybe it wasn't there no more. You're, you're Lucifer. Not at all. Yeah, what I said well, was, I'm just I'm, I, I said, I can't promise this, but I found what I think is the perfect gift for you. And you may still be getting it. It's going to be late. You may still get it. Did I say you're definitely getting it? Yeah. I said, oh, Andy, you're totally, you're, you're getting it. No, I never did. You, I said, you, me. you may be. Got my hopes I all always, up. And not at all. Like a fat kid at a dance. <laughs> It's okay, man. I'm used hey, to it. Fact, you know what? At my school, the fat kid always got danced with. Did he really? There's always a girl who would dance with the fat kid. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Salt of the earth people in Middleville, man. I'm telling you. Well, I, I. That's how we were raised. I, I well, just so you know, yeah. uh, since since you were this way with my Christmas gift this year, yesterday when I was on TV 13 in my featured uh -huh. role, you know, you're you're kind of like the, the clown over there. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. Uh, Fourth wheel. I am yes. the. In, invited monthly guest right um yeah cindy was like should we make dave a cookie plate that would have been beautiful it would have but guess what <laughs> i said no he gets nothing <laughs> all right that's how it works man well see that's what I, that, that's the way i figured it all you right had your chance fine. you, you could have done things right this year but no you screwed it up you just you, you, you okay. it's like that carrot with in front of the donkey Right. You just dangle it Good out there analogy. in front of me. And You're the this, donkey. This is the year, right. Andy. I'm going to get you something. Mm -hmm. You'll really feel like I did something for you for a change. And no, never mind. Hey, man, I'm I'm doing something now. I'm I'm working. I, I work overtime every day with you. Oh man. yeah, you do. <laughs> a good twelve minutes. <laughs> oh, All right. What are we going to do? Life and news? salt mines. Yeah. Anytime you're ready, I'm, man. I'm, dude, I'm ready. All right, let's get gonna, into wait, it. Wait, well, uh, wait. Let me just pretend I have a gift to open here. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's my fake gift. It's got nothing. Uh, here's my gift of nothingness. Uh, okay. You do the news. I'm going to wow. pretend there's a, a cherished gift here. Oh, look, right. it's a Chia Pet. <laughs> Are you done? Anytime Goal. you're done, I'll start. Are we done? Yeah. Okay. ISIS has lost 98% of the territory it once held since the first of the year, with half of the group's so-called caliphate being recaptured. According to American intelligence, fewer than 1,000 ISIS fighters remain in Iraq and Syria. That's down from 45,000 just two years ago. Officials credit 30,000 U.S.-led coalition airstrikes for killing 70,000 jihadists. Wow. That's a pretty big deal. I mean, he, I, he, you can never say, hey, we got a, we got them all completely beaten and destroyed because there's always going to be crazy people. Right. There's always going to be offshoots. I mean, whether it's ISIS, uh, you know, it's some other terrorist group, Al-Qaeda, you know, we didn't even know what ISIS was until like three years ago, four years ago. So yeah. it's um, who knows what's going to come out of that. But uh, it's good to know that uh, – we're making a lot of headway in that fight, and maybe we can move on to other things. Who knows? Good thinking. Uh, the United Nations budget is set to shrink by $285 million next year. The Secretary General's office says the new $5.4 billion budget includes cuts to most departments and offices. Earlier this week, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley faulted the U.N. for inefficiency in spending, saying the generosity of the American people will not be taken advantage of. The U.S. pays about 25% of the regular budget. Wow. They, they had to make cuts. I mean, we're, uh, we're, how about this? How about this? We pay the 25% and you guys shut the hell up over where we put our embassies. Okay, come on. I mean, you're, it's basically a useless debating society anyway. All you got, I mean, they do some really good things. I don't like to crap over the UN because that's a popular thing to do because um, they do good things when it comes to humanitarian efforts. Right. And, and by the way, the budget has nothing to do with the humanitarian, with, with, what they give to other countries. It's just part of basically their working budget. Um, but they do good things when it comes to humanitarian aid. Stick to that and shut the hell up over everything else. There you go. That's said my piece. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Finally, expect <laughs> hey, slow by traffic. The way, you know what? I should say, just because what? I want to feel cool, 
Uh, I met Nikki Haley at a, a NASCAR race once. You you've mentioned you've mentioned that before, and yeah, I, I hear she's lovely. Uh, well, and, you know, uh, I mean, you know, I, it was it was. I, I can say she met me. You know, yeah. <laughs> she met you. You met her. We were you know, a couple of. It was a magical right. day. Yeah, and you now, know, now you're both I'm talking to Richard yeah. Petty. The next minute, yeah. I'm talking to Nikki Haley. Then that big tall yeah. guy that does the army, uh, the the wounded warrior commercial was there. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I wait, forget he his was in, name. Where was he? He was in Martinsville. Okay, see now uh, you're you're all confused. Yeah, well, it was my NASCAR it's year, okay. man. I got all confused. It's okay. About that. And that that was that was before your foray into politics. So you know, yeah. that was yeah. a couple of couple of future future uh, world leaders. Well, she was kind of giving uh, me that look, like you know, someday you're going to be a, a force. Yeah, she was just the governor of South Carolina at that point, yeah. and I was kind of like, yeah, right. someday I'll be a force. Eh, you, someday you'll be see, ambassador. There you go. You know. So, <laughs> you never know. Uh, rubbing elbows, doing that uh, kind of ex- thing. Did I tell you about the ex- time? You know, at Darling- at Darlington that time too, I had to run interference for Chrissy Newman. Yeah, you did. You yeah. you've mentioned that story. Did that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You were a mover, sh- mover and a shaker back well, then. Well, she had to get to her, her 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 hauler, and I was you know there was a crowd of people, and she's like, "Can you get these people out of the way for me?" And I said, "Yeah, okay." You know what? I think I did a really good job at pretending I knew who the hell Chrissy Newman was. Ryan Newman's wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I know who Ryan Newman is. He, he, Chrissy yeah, Newman. Just, he, you should have you should have said Ryan Newman's wife, and then I would have. But she's just adjacent to to celebrity. Uh, well, she's not one herself. She is a celebrity. Like a, We're all celebrities, uh, no. Dave, in our own way. Oh, that's right. Because everybody's got everybody's not every, got their you know, voice out there all the time. Not everybody's on TV like you are, Dave. So we nope. have to find our own celebrity the way we can. But who watches TV anymore? I've ever, ever, everybody's on Twitter. Everybody's on <laughs> Facebook. People even watch TV? Do you, I, I hope I, they I watch mean, TV because otherwise they wouldn't live. see you. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, yeah. they have to watch me so they get to work on time. It's very important. There you have it. Absolutely. <laughs> Expect slow traffic again along US-31 through Muskegon today due to the bitter cold and icy conditions. Numerous crashes were reported in that stretch between Fruitvale and Russell Road yesterday. Several Oof. slide-offs with multiple semis hit in the ditch. Conditions going to be similar again today, so use extreme caution if you're out and about. Um, that's my little two cents, little, little traffic tidbit for you. It's, it's really, it, I, I keep on beating this drum, but all these accidents, pretty much 99% of them are preventable. Yeah. Slow down. You'll be fine. Dude, on our way over yesterday to TV 13 to do the positively Muskegon thing, there were points and all I kept thinking was this is how those 50 car pileups start. Exactly. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm driving, you know, 45, 50 miles an hour right. over there and you can't see. And uh-huh. you get the one jackass in the 18 wheeler that thinks he can do 75 still. Exactly. And it's like, dude, slow down, you guys. Really? I mean, so. and this is not this is not the kind of weather you want to be stuck in an accident in. Not at all. That is just that this is, I mean, ass biting cold. Ten degrees below zero. Oh. Ten below today. Oh. This morning it was coldest. I think the, this is the coldest. A uh, December twenty seventh on record. And although I did talk to Aaron Offsire a few minutes ago, he said, um, you know, it's going to warm up a little bit next week or it's going to get back into the mid 20s. But in a couple of weeks, we could be looking at above average temperatures. So nice. uh, that's, you know, for like, you know, mid January, something so, to look so forward by, to. So by the time it's be 38 degrees, their snowmobiles, it's going to be spring. Yeah. <laughs> they can't get out and ride them again. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Sports. It was the Pistons hammering the Indiana Pacers 107 to 83. Detroit takes on New Jersey in NHL action tonight. And Danica Patrick retiring from NASCAR. Not She's surprised. Out. She, uh, you know, it was, it was a great idea. It looked good on yeah. paper. She was a great salesperson. She was a great ambassador Absolutely. for the sport. She just, she didn't have the skill. Yeah. Uh, you Bottom know, line. I'm sorry to say that she just couldn't get up there and compete the way she needed to, and uh, to listen to her on the scanner. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh. Kept looking in the vanity mirror, turn four. It's like you know. Okay. By that, you know, I don't know a whole lot about sports. Believe it or not, but I do know a thing or two about racing, and I can yeah. tell you this: a driver crew chief relationship is generally a one-way conversation. And if you listen to Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss back and forth on the radio, there's no discussion. There's no debate. There's no back and forth and let's try this, let's try that. Let's, it's Chad Knauss telling Jimmy Johnson what to do. And let me let me ask okay. you this. How many cha- how many championships does Jimmy Johnson have? Five. 
Four. Ballpark. Yeah, five. Yeah. <laughs> Danica Patrick wanted to turn everything into a debate. What if we tried this? What if we tried that? Really? Yeah, oh Wait a second. <laughs> what Wait if you shut second. up you're... and do what I tell you to do? <laughs> Wait, you're, you're saying a, a woman was wanted to argue about something? No, no, no I'm not saying that. that I'm just saying this particular oh, professional. No. no, man. Come on now. Get out of here. I wouldn't make a generalization like that, Dave. Not me. You might I would. Have. You just did. Yeah. Hey, you... And I love it. I love that. <laughs> I love that about the ladies. Hey, guess what? What? You're out of here. Yeah.